All right, hey everyone. Um, I am back here at the README for the project. Um, so if you got here through YouTube, I would just click down in the description and get here to this uh, README in the GitHub. <clears throat> and in this video, we're gonna go over image segmentation with UNet. So, um, if that doesn't mean much to you, hopefully it will by the end of this video. So let's get into it. So basically right click this uh, collab badge, open this link in a new tab, and then save a copy to the drive that you can edit. Um, and that way you can follow along uh, as we go and I think that will make this a lot more useful for you. Okay, so I already have the notebook open here. Um, so I'm gonna just get into it. So, uh, okay, so the overview is basically we're gonna use a PyTorch implementation of UNet and we're gonna write that from scratch to segment a simple and flexible data set of images that we're also gonna build from scratch. So if you watched the previous video, um, which you don't have to for this to make sense, but I think it is gonna probably be more useful if you watch them in consecutive order. Um, I'm not gonna go into as much detail on like how we're building this data set, but uh, so if you want detail on that, watch the first video. But um, basically the task is we have an image and we want to classify each pixel as being in a different class, right? So we wanna, each pixel now is getting uh, a label so this is very different than just counting the number of uh, objects in an image where there's absolutely no information about where that object is in the image right um, that's being predicted or, or understood by the model okay so um, we're going to use PyTorch, Torch Vision, Torch Lightning and Torch Metrics just like we did in the last video and just like we did in the last video we're gonna start with imports, PyTorch data set, build out that PyTorch data set from scratch, then compartmentalize that into a data module, uh, Torch Lightning data module. Then we're gonna visualize our data, build out the model, build out the UNet model, uh, overfit a small batch, build the Lightning module, train, and then visualize some predictions on some test data, and then we'll wrap up. Okay, so uh, let's get into it. And then again, here I have these resources, um, which have been useful to, to me, uh, and I think they could be useful to you as well for just like general deep learning and computer vision uh, learning. And then here are some uh, resources on UNet itself. So I've got the UNet paper open here and we'll reference this kind of, you know, this is where it gets its name from, and we'll reference this and uh, as we go. So, uh, okay. Yeah, and then there's some other like questions that I found interesting answered on Stack Exchange and things. And then the links to the project and my own personal stuff. Okay, so I, like last time, I think it's gonna be most valuable for these top sections to jump into this visualizing data uh, section of the of the notebook and look at what's going on, look at what we're trying to build, and then we'll go back to the top and work our way down to see like how we actually build this and um, then start to work towards training it. Okay, so before, the targets, right, when we were counting, the targets were just the number of each class that was present in the image, right? So now we have this same sort of thing, exact same thing, these grayscale images, but the targets are actually uh, different class labels, right? So I've associated, um, and I'll, you'll see how or later, but I've associated each label with a different color, right? So um, when I show the target masks, this is what we want the model to learn. We want the model to learn that there's a, 
a donut here and there's background here and there's a line here and there's a rectangle there um, and identify each pixel as being part of that class okay so yeah this is like super important and how like all this plays out is evident in the mask RCNN uh, where things get a little more complicated because you're actually locating the objects as well, not just identifying the pixels. Because the key here is that I don't have any information about like how many there are when I do UNet, right? So UNet is not telling me that there are two donuts. It's just telling me that all of these blue pixels are in the donut class. Okay, so that's why I liked trying to have the object counting tutorial and then this unit tutorial, which are both sort of simple and accomplish different things, unique things. And then when we go to the faster RCNN and mask RCNN, it's really motivated. We're like, okay, now we can locate the what is there, the class, and then also where in the image and what uh, pixels are associated with that class, right? Or I'm sorry, with that instance. Um, so, uh, okay, so yeah, so this is what the targets are looking like and what we're gonna try to get our, our model to, uh, to output. So let's go up here uh, and look at the data set. I'm not gonna look at every single cell here, but the, um, let's see, these are just the base classes. These are the exact same. The, as they were in the previous tutorial basically the base classes all they do is you know draw the shapes on the images they're not really responsible for building out the targets which is what is actually interesting to us here so let's look at this so this is the image segmentation data set uh, and yeah this is really nice in collab if you just hover over here you can like read the doc string uh, and that's true for whether or not, you know, the, like if even if the function isn't defined in, in the in the collab notebook. So, uh, yeah, what's going on here? We have the same as before. We have this build images and targets method. And basically what this is doing is as it goes through and builds the shapes, it also builds the targets and the um, target is of shape image size, image size, right? So the, the target itself is as big as the image, right? It doesn't have three dimensions. It just has, uh, you know, it just has uh, the, um, two dimensions of image size by image size, but that is something to note, right? Like now our targets are these big objects, right? Because we have to, we have information about each pixel and what class each pixel is associated with. And so how we build that from scratch is just when we fill the images with the shapes, right? So shape here is basically just a set of coordinates for that like rectangle inside the image. And so when we fit, when we feed that to the, well, you know, we're just, we're basically using all those coordinates and saying, fill those with, with some, uh, you know, grayscale values. We're also filling that same shape in the target with the class ID, right? So the target now is Basically, you can imagine if for class ID one, if there's a rectangle, which is class ID one, it's going to have, the target is going to have ones all over that place where the rectangle is, right? Because uh, that's, yeah, that that's the target. Uh, okay, and then there's just some like, you know, converting to, uh, from NumPy to, um, to PyTorch like I'll just say this like squeeze and unsqueeze are so helpful so like go and read about those if you don't use them uh, often already 
So basically we're just taking this image, unsqueezing it, so giving it a dimension zero, and then adding, repeating that dimension zero three times. And that's because it's a grayscale, or it's, a, it's really a color image, but each color layer is identical, which results in something that uh, looks gray or looks grayscale, right? Okay, and then we just torch.stack. So we have this list of images and this list of targets, and then we stack them all into just one, uh, one tensor and we return a ten an image is tensor, tensor and a target's tensor. Okay, data module, uh, I'm not gonna go into the data module. It's pretty, it's pretty straightforward. It basically just is grouping these uh, data sets, the uh, validation, uh, <laughs> the training validation and test sets and grouping them into one object that you can then use really nicely with PyTorch Lightning. Okay, so I'm not gonna go into that. Um, it's the exact same as in the first video and I'm trying to make this one a little bit shorter because that one was crazy long. Okay, but I do wanna talk about this function. There's some interesting math um, or, you know, like sort of index, uh, index uh, <laughs> magic happening here that I think could be useful to people in some other projects. So labels to masks, that's the name of this function, and it converts a batch of segmentation labels into binary masks used with UNet uh, or in other segmentation tasks. This function uh, works for both batches of labels or single 2D image labels. Okay, so that's just what, we're gonna look at how this works, but basically, Remember that the labels uh, are just height by width, right? Because there, there is no uh, first dimension there or zeroth dimension. It's just height by width. And each, uh, each uh, object or each element in that 2D array corresponds to the class of the uh, of the image there, whether it be background or you know class one or class two. So what we wanna do is go from that to actually a set of masks, right? Where each mask corresponds to one class and is just binary, right? So the first mask would be class zero. Uh, then the second class, the second binary mask is gonna be where class one objects are. The third, third binary mask is gonna be where class two objects are. And how you get that to work with the indexing uh, can be sort of annoying. So I hope that this is useful for people to, to run through here. So, uh, so I kind of understanding this, so I kind of build this up from scratch here and hopefully this will be useful. So just imagine we have just a one dimensional set of labels, just this two, one, zero, one, one, right? And we wanna build this set of binary masks from this, right? So what we do um, is first we get the unique object IDs by just doing labels.unique, right? So that's gonna be uh, zero, one, and two, right? So those are the object IDs. All right, it's telling me to utilize my GPU, but it's okay. Just ignore it. Okay, so uh, those are my IDs or my classes, right? And then I do, um, I do, so I wanna, I'm building up to like understanding how this works. So, that's why we look at this. So when we do the colon none, that's basically turning this into uh, a, now it's a column vector, right? Uh, so when we turn it into a column vector and then we, uh, so I should say it's, it's, it's shape three by one, right? So 
it's it's not strictly a column vector, I guess. Um, well, yeah, it is. So, uh, but then basically this is where the money is right here. So how do you get this binary mask, right? And it's very simple. It's just this line right here, which is awesome, right? So what you're doing is you're saying labels equals equals objects IDs. So all it's doing is it's going through this column vector and then it's saying is labels equal to the first one? So that's going to be false, false, true because this element is a zero and then false, false, right? Because those are ones. And then it goes through one and has trues where the ones are. And then it goes through two and has true trues where the two is, right? And that is our binary mask for this one dimensional tensor. It's the exact same when you go to two dimensions, right? Uh, so like here, I have an example. Um, so here we have a three by three image of batch size 32 and you have, um, so here I, I can show how I did this. Just I did rand int, so it's gonna create random integers uh, with the high, a high value of four, right? So basically there's going to be, uh, you know, number zero to three uh, in this um, 2D array. And then, so that's basically like our set of labels. And then we can build a set of binary masks from this by applying our function and we see like, okay, this is the binary mask for class zero because there's a zero there, zero there. These are uh, the binary mask for class one, class two, there's no two, so they're all false, and class three. Okay, that's useful because lots of these utility functions want binary masks, uh, and it's just a common thing to have to go between binary masks and labels. Once you have binary masks, um, it's, it's easy to go back to labels, right? You can just use like an argmax um, on dimension one, um, but we'll see that. Okay, so let's keep going. So that's the labels to masks function. We visualized our data set. We already have an intuition for what these different functions do from last time, right? Like, you know, if you crank up class probability one, you're gonna get a bunch of rectangles. If you crank up class probability three, you're gonna get a bunch of donuts and so on. And then there's the different grayscale values um, for things, you know, and that's, so that's making this whiter as I increase the grayscale values. So, but watch the first video if you want all the details or just read the documentation for the, func for the uh, classes. Okay. So let's go into the model now. Okay. So now we're going to go into the <coughs> the model here, the um, the unit model, right? So we use this same uh, double conf class that we used in the last tutorial, and so I'm not going to go over that. But it's just like a feature extraction double conv layer, right? So uh, we don't need to go into that in too much detail. Um, take some inputs, input channels and output channels. Uh, yeah, and it conducts two, two conv layers with some bash normalization and ReLU layers in between. Okay, but this unit is what we really are after here. Hopefully this light doesn't blind people, but it's okay. Um, so, okay, so UNet is, uh, we're gonna try to implement UNet from scratch here, right? So uh, it takes some number of input channels uh, and some number of classes, uh, first feature number, and the number of layers. So we'll look at how this works, but the, the cool thing is that it's totally convolutional, right? So if we look at the unit architecture, 
it doesn't need to know the image size because it's there's never a fully connected layer that needs to know that right like um so it's just it's basically extracting like semantic information from these images so like information right it's losing the spatial information as it goes down right so this in the paper they have i think it's 572 by 572 and then it's going down it's getting reduced down to like 30 by 30 and then it gets built back up to being the same shape as the input image right um and so yeah so let's see how this works in practice here so if we go here we're going to walk through this um so there's these different uh arguments here uh and we want to see how these work together to build the model so the we get we're going to build this features list um which is first feature number times two to the i to the ith power for i in range number of layers, right? So basically, each you're, we're going to extract twice as many features each time as we go down, right? So like, uh, yeah. So we'll we'll see how that how that plays out. Um, but so like we'll we'll see an example. Um, okay, and then there's uh, skip connections, so I can you can turn those on and off. So this this implementation is based on uh, Aladdin Persons implementation, uh, but I added in some some things to sort of organize it potentially better and. Uh, make it easier to sort of get an intuition for how these shapes are actually working and how things are being passed through the model. And so I also made it so that you can turn on and off the skip connections, which we'll talk about. And it's really cool because you can see like immediately that the skip connections are huge. If you turn them off, the model behaves horribly. Um, or, you know, the predictions are terrible. So, okay. So you should really watch... Aladdin's, uh, Al, I don't know how to pronounce his name. I think it's Aladdin. His from scratch implementation uh, YouTube video that I linked to in the top because he's going to go into a lot of detail and I don't want to go into that much detail here because I'm more interested in like actually the sort of logistics of training a model um, or training this unit model on a data set using PyTorch Lightning. Um, but the idea is that there's a, oh, whoops. There's a down layer and then an up, uh, or you know, um, or a down part and an up part to the um, to the model. And uh, let's see how that works. So the down part we're saying for feature in self dot features downs dot append this double comp. So basically, it's just building this layer, this sequential list of uh, double conv layers that take it down and reduce the sort of like spatial, um, you know, resolution of and spatial information and down into the semantic information. So then there's the up part of the unit. This is a little more complicated because as we go up in the unit, we also have these skip connections, which basically they literally take this, the, state of x like of whatever's being passed through the model and pass it to the opposite side of the uh model and just concatenate that onto x on the other side and what that does is it gives this like over here it this side of the model has access to all this feature information like you know you can think about that sort of abstractly like oh it knows textures and shapes and things right but it doesn't know locations and then by concatenating the more location oriented information that this side has over there you enable the 
UNet to basically like actually do a good job of making boundaries of shapes and things like that. That's my understanding. But I know that skip connections can also be used to like help with vanishing gradients and exploding gradients and things. So it's nice to be able to get an intuition for how they work here. Okay, so then on the up part, we have uh, this uh, conv transpose. So that's basically what is upsizing the images, right? It's increasing the shapes of the images by two as, as it goes up. Uh, and yeah, you can read about that in the docs here. Um, a 2D transpose convolution operator over an input image. Uh, so yeah, and then the uh, when it goes up, it has the uh, transpose conv, and then it also has double conv layers as well. So these accomplish what the max pooling does on the way down, right? It's like an inverse max pooling almost. Um, uh, and we'll we'll see that. So. Um, in the in the forward method. Okay, so then yeah, so then if we skip connect, we need to have an extra factor of two in here. Um, if we don't, we don't because when you skip connect, you basically double the size of or like double the number of features uh, that you have at that layer, right? So you need to double the input number of features in your in your double conv layer at that given level of the of the model. Okay, and then I have this little function, I used this in the last tutorial as well, to just track the shape of x uh, as we go so that we can get an intuition here for how this works. Okay, so let's go over the forward method here. It's, um, I know we're kind of getting down in the details here, but um, this is really cool how this works. So, uh, okay. So first it's saying for index down in enumerate self dot downs, X equals down of X. So it's doing the double conv. Uh, and then it's saying, okay, append X to skip connection. So it's collecting all of the, uh, states of X as it goes down the, um, unit architecture, right? So it's collecting X, like if we look here, it's like collecting X here, 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 and here to save it so that later it can append that onto the up side of the architecture. Um, okay, so it, then it does the max pool. The max pool is actually what's reducing the image size, right? Uh, then it has a bottleneck. That's basically just like, you have like an extra conv layer for the bottleneck. So you can see what that is. Then it reverses the list of skip connections, right? Because it actually needs the last item first when it's going on its way up um, to connect those different sides. Then it says for index in range, uh, this is zero is kind of unnecessary, but uh, length of self dot ups increment by two, apply X to self dot up. So that's going to do the transverse con convolution. Uh, and then, uh, basically it's, if it, if your skip connecting concatenate the skip connection onto X and that's all it does. It just con concatenates those together. Uh, and that is what accomplishes that like better spatial understanding of the model, which is really cool. Um, and then we just have this final conv layer. So let's look at this and run just some, some sample data through it to make sure this sort of makes sense. Okay. So we've got the unit model here in channels, three number of classes, two first feature, number four, number of layers, two, Skip connections true, track x shape equals true, kernel size three, bias false. Okay, so we can mess with all those 
um, you know, to see how the model performs. And then we just have a, the same as we did in the previous tutorial, a 13 size, batch size of 13, image size of 256. Okay, so first, let's look at the feature list used in the model here, right? So the feature list used in the model is 4, 8, right? Because it takes 4, and it knows it has 2 layers, and the next layer is going to be 8, right? If it was 3 layers, it would be 4, 8, 16. Okay, so it's iterating through those, uh, through that list of features as it goes down, and then sort of inversely as it goes back up, right? And then we've got uh, model x, x dot x shape tracker. So this is basically a list of the shapes at all the different steps along the way, right? We use this little method to save like the state of the shape at this certain uh, state in the um, in the model. So let's see how that works. So the input size. Input shape is this. Um, then the first conv layer extracts four features, right? First feature number is four, so that makes sense. Then this max pool layer reduces the image size by two, right? Then there's another conv layer that gives us eight features, right? Because that's our feature list is four, eight. Uh, then we do have another max pool layer. Then we have the bottleneck, um, which doubles the number of features. Then we have the inverse conv layer. So that uh, doubles the image size and the number of features. Um, oh, is there something missing here? No, that's good. Um, Okay, so I was just confusing myself there for a second. It's actually the the inverse, the conv transpose halves the features and doubles the image size, right? And that's because if we go up here, uh, yeah, so it has the input features, feature times two, output features, feature, and then a kernel size of two. Okay, so, uh, and then, when, where are we? So here we are, and then the skip connection, right? That doubles the size of uh, of this uh, of the features, and then we keep going, right? The um, double conv uh, and then another transpose skip connection again doubles it so yeah you can see that you can go through this I shouldn't go through this slowly it's gonna get really boring but um, yeah and then these masks let's look at what these actually are right um, these are you know there's two sets of masks because our output size is this right and we can just do like an arg max to find the predictions, right? So that's what we did down here. We can look at what we did down there. Uh, I did a soft max and then an arg max. That's not actually necessary, but it's nicer to look at a soft max, not like just looking at the raw logits. So, uh, yeah, so we arg max dimension one basically, right? And that is going to tell us which uh, which class we predict that pixel to be. So, you know, here, for example, this negative 0.2 is bigger than negative 0.4. So this should be one, right? Because it's the second mask that has the larger number and so on, right? And this is a one because minus 0 0.02 is bigger than minus 0.4, right? Um, Okay, so now let's go on to overfitting a small batch here. So this is the exact same as the first tutorial. Um, if this step is confusing, please go rewatch that or just like, you know, go check out the very uh, basic PyTorch tutorials. 
on how to step through, um, uh, you know, step through the training step here. So that's what we're doing, just a simple training step. We have to normalize the images, make sure they're on the devices um, or on the, our device, and then uh, do the zero grad backward and step our parameters. Okay, so let's keep going here. Let's now, we're gonna make the data module just like we did in the previous tutorial and run this overfit function to make sure that the model is at least working to first order. Uh, I don't know how many epochs I asked for. Looks like quite a lot, okay. But it's really fast actually. The unit is super fast, it's really cool. Um, Okay, so yeah, I don't know. I have this why use softmax. You don't really, well, the reason we're gonna use softmax is because we are gonna actually just apply some thresholds to our masks to make the binary masks or to our softmax, to our soft masks to make binary masks. And then we can kind of see like how well the model knows like the boundary of the object and stuff and like do some cool stuff there. So, but if you are, you know, you don't need to technically do that. Uh, okay, so then, so all I did was some, was some uh, rectangles here. So let's just draw the predictions Okay, so those are the predictions. So red, if we go up to the class mask, or I'm sorry, the class map, so rectangles are red. So it's perfectly predicting that in the overfit case, right? Because the labels look exactly like that. Okay, and then the threshold, we can mess with this a little bit, but it's gonna know, it knows that pretty well. So it's really only when I get up to like 0.99 that it's, you can see now what this thresholding, you know, now that we've soft maxed it, each pixel is a value between zero and one, right? So we can apply a threshold in that first dimension. Um, and you know, all I'm doing is just like probs greater than threshold, right? That's the prediction. And then, you can see that like at some point it is only so sure, but you know, it's 90, it has giving us a soft mask value of like 99 or so for a lot of these. So, okay. Um, okay, so now we're gonna build our lightning module. This is, uh, oh, I haven't had my, microphone in, so I hope I sounded okay for people. Um, this is uh, the same as before, right? So we're building out this lightning module. This is what contains the uh, loss function, the model, the metrics, the optimizer, all of those are grouped into this um, into this object and it's super nice, makes it really reusable and easy to use. So I'm not gonna go into a huge amount of detail. The, it's exactly like the first tutorial, right? Basically, you define a forward method, a training step, a validation step, uh, and you configure your optimizer and then you are ready to train. So let's see what happens when we train. So. Remember to train, we have, we need a data module, right? So that's what contains our data sets, our training, validation, and test sets. We need a uh, callback, and then we need a logger. We don't need those things, but we're using them. Uh, and then we need the lightning module. Um, so we're gonna start off with a uh, thousand images and see how we do training on this. And let's see, let's do, let's do skip connect equals true first. So these are those skip connections that we were talking about. And it's, we'll, we'll see how, how it behaves when you get rid of those. But for now, 
let's oh it didn't like something oh I didn't actually run that cell and it didn't like that okay so let's see so again the in sizes are oh okay so I'm gonna pause this for a sec and come back when it's done but it actually it's really blasting through these epochs so it, oh it's already done okay so I paused there for a second and I ran a couple little experiments to just show how people could use this um, uh, okay that's never seen that um, for sure that seems useful so okay so uh, basically um, as we talked about we need the uh, data module and we need the lightning module right and so um, we also have the checkpoint callback and the logger uh, now our logger is again the tensorboard but we're using we're gonna call our experiment image segmentation and uh, I'm already done this this trains super fast so it's it's really cool uh, like training 50 epochs on this thousand images is taking like two minutes or something and so I mean that's a big sort of like motivation behind why I tried to pursue this project is because I just wanted like really simple little data sets that I could learn with right and gain intuition with and when you're working with real images for computer vision and stuff it's 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 tricky it's uh, hard to deal with you know big images okay so let's look I have a few different versions here but I want to show you it might like seem confusing but I want to show you so remember like every time we run an experiment a different version is saved and then we can see those in the tensorboard logger and uh, look at how things are performing right so the let's only look at these last two for now so let's look at the hyperparameters the um, let me see how do I scroll over So skip connect hyperparameter, right? Whether or not to include the skip connections in the model. So I did the first experiment, which I believe was three. Uh, I don't like that you can't see which. Oh, let me make this bigger. Yeah, so, okay. So version three was no skip connections version 4 was with skip connections otherwise identical 50 epochs um, and everything else the same about the data sets and if we look at the performance uh, just gonna look at those two side by side um, we can see that things are behaving really well with the um, skip connections and without them it's not doing amazing I mean that might seem good oh it's doing 97 percent accuracy for in the validation set but remember that like the image is mostly background right so if it guesses zero class zero for everything it could already be at 90 percent accuracy um, so let's look at some test images okay well we could look at the graph uh, of the of the model of the unit model and you can kind of see how things get passed around here um, this is kind of hard to see all at once but you know you can follow these shapes down like if you zoom in you can see the shapes of everything uh, there it'll clear up yeah so and then see how these are all these tensors are passed around in the model um, yeah, so let's see if we, you know, you can mess around with these different options. But um, yeah, let's go down and look at some 
test data. So let's visualize on some of this. So I want to look at version three and four. So let's first look at version three. So remember, we're basically we load up the test uh, data loader or data module or the test data loader in the uh, data module and then look grab some images and labels and let's visualize this for uh, version 3 okay so we want to display our predictions so it's actually not horrible like that's not that bad but you know this is what we're going for uh, that those are the labels these are the predictions so it's doing an okay job it's learning something right but that was with no skip connections now let's look at with skip connections let's look at these predictions okay so now it's spot on right like for the most part this these it's really like understanding the edges super well right uh okay so now let's change the mask thresholding so if we really increase this thresholding we can start to see like the limits like in these regions where it's really like it's in between a line and a donut it's not as sure about those pixels right and so those why those are disappearing um when the threshold is getting up but you know the threshold is at 90 one here and as we get up we can start to see you know some unlabeled uh, regions and then well obviously when we go to one nothing exceeds one so yeah we can see it's doing a pretty great job it's pretty damn confident uh, about these different uh, pixels. Okay, so another cool thing we can do is, oh, that wasn't even, I wasn't even looking at the 50th epoch, but it wasn't that much better at 50. Uh, but another cool thing we can do is scroll through the epochs and sort of see like what it learns first, right? So it actually learned almost everything like I didn't need to run it for 50 epochs, right? Like, look, this is epoch three and it's already learned almost everything. There is, you know, so, but you can see at epoch one, it didn't really know the donuts at all. So it actually, it sort of learned the lines and rectangles first. And then when we go to the second epoch, it's starting to learn the donut class. And then, you know, by the, 10th epoch it's doing pretty great oh it's still having a little trouble in these regions but yeah and remember these are all predictions on this same test set but just with weights and biases coming from different epochs right um okay so this is working really well like this model is super cool honestly and um you know, you could train this on your own data set if you had a, you know, some web app to segment your images. So, um, okay, so let's wrap up here. Uh, we are gonna conclude here with what was covered. We built a from scratch implementation of UNet um, that we then used to uh, train a model or <laughs> train on uh, a simple and flexible data set. And then we really saw that skip connections really matter. So like I have some links at the top of the article um, for reading about those skip connections that is really interesting, the development of them. And we started getting the hang of PyTorch Lightning more. Um, so yeah, I hope that was useful and so like, again, I have these functions built into a package, the PyTorch tutorials package that you can pip install. So if you just run the cells below here, you'll have your own little sandbox you can start building 
um, with these like, you know, tinker toys basically and start ma making sense of things hopefully. So uh, yeah, you know, these are some questions that I think would be fun to like in invest more in. Like, so what happens if you add a ton of layers? Like I only had five layers unit up here, um, but maybe you could get away with even less and then your model would be even more lightweight. Uh, what if you had a large number of features, like first feature number is greater than, much greater than one. What happens if you increase the number of examples? That was only a thousand uh, example data set. Uh, okay, these sort of questions. So then, and you could also make a really imbalanced data set, see how it performs on that. So I just wanna show you how you can uh, import these methods uh, for yourself. So, you know, here we're just, just doing the same thing we we're doing above. You know, you can grab the, uh, like, widgets from above, but here we're just visualizing the labels um, of the data set that we grabbed. Uh, so, yeah, we got that, we got the data module, and then we also have the model. Uh, and then any of those utility functions, like labels to masks, any of those are also in the, um, in the package. And yeah, so you can also check out the documentation to learn more. But um, yeah, so this is all, you know, I'm using just CV models dot unit, um, you know, and you can just copy these last five or six cells and you're, you're on your way. So I hope this was useful to people. Um, yeah, thanks a lot for watching and I will see you on the next video. Bye.